When you know everything, it's hard for you to admit when you don't know something. So what you do is act an ass to throw people off. What? Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. You see this hat? This is a free gift. When you make a purchase, not including the shipment, of over $50, you will receive this free hat. But that only applies to the first four orders and if you are not already a part of this book club please hit the patreon link below and or the join button here on the youtube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the youtube gets it now Let's continue talking about Ronnie Spector's Be My Baby. Be my, be my baby. When I hear some of the stories that go around about my marriage to Phil, I'm amazed. Everybody assumes he must have beat me all the time to keep me there at the mansion with him. But he never laid a hand on me. Physical abuse was not his style. Psychological torture was his specialty. Name calling, shouting, cursing, those kinds of things. And I'll tell you, there were times when he shouted so much that I almost wished he would just go ahead and hit me. The one time I did get hurt, it was from me trying to get away from him. It was the day before he was supposed to leave on a business trip to Philadelphia and I had made plans to visit my family in New York while he was gone. Phil usually let me go to New York for a week or so every couple of months, but for some reason he didn't want me leaving town while he was away. I was standing at the top of our stairs when he explained his reasoning. You've got to stay here and watch over things while I'm gone, he said. I'll let you go to New York after I get back. And that was the end of the discussion, or so he thought. But I needed a break from California too desperately to let it drop that easy. Let me tell you what this girl did. Oh my goodness. So anyway, she decided to host a party. Phil ain't here, so let's have a good time. People at the party, they like, girl, you got pills around here? We know you got alcohol, but where's the pill? Okay, because you know them rich folks, they love the dogs. Now, come to find out, she was like, oh, I got some pills. What color pills do you want? Red, blue, green, purple, whatever. Just bring them down here. Girl, do you even know what kind of pills you take? I guess rich people just have dolls laying around the house. She gives the people the dolls. They like, here, you take one. Okay, I'll take a pill, too. Why not? So she didn't took these pills. Don't forget, she a drinker. She had this crazy accident because the bitch decided to get in the car and drive. Why she on alcohol and the dolls? I mean, people do it all the time. Them soccer moms be drunk as she is going to pick them kids up. After all the shit that happened in 1968, the new year had to be an improvement. And it was. In January, Phil announced that we were going back to the studio to make my first new record in almost three years. I couldn't believe it. One morning, he was swimming around the pool, doing his laps just like every other day. The next minute, he's drying himself off with a big flowered towel saying, I think I'm going down to the studio today. Do you want to come? Phil, I asked. Is this a joke? Veronica, he sighed. Why would I joke about a thing like that? He knew he was torturing me with this casual attitude, but I think he was afraid of making too big of a deal out of going back to work just in case he flopped again. But I didn't care. I always knew Phil had it in him to come back. Making records is a disease that we both had and there just isn't any cure. You just have to keep going back and trying to make more hits. 
facts. That's just how YouTube is. If I don't have large numbers on this video, it don't matter. I'm just going to keep coming back unless I give up YouTube totally. But I'm just going to keep coming back and making another. That's just how it is. And that's what Phil and I were going to do. I was sure of it. Phil even had a brand new song for me. You came, you saw, you conquered, which he wrote with Tony Wine and Erwin Levine. But the record company had been out of business since 1966, and a lot of things changed in three years, especially in the music business. For one thing, we recorded in a brand new studio. Phil had a deal to release his new stuff through Herb Alpert's A&M label. So we showed up for work in this fantastic state-of-the-art studio that Herb had at A&M. Phil was used to working with the antique stuff they had at Gold Star. And I think he felt a little intimidated around all these space-age recorders and microphones. Unfortunately, instead of admitting he was out of his class, he tried to make up for his ignorance by acting more tyrannical than ever, especially to me. When you know everything, it's hard for you to admit when you don't know something. So what you do is act an ass to throw people off. What? I finished my vocals after a couple of days and Phil sent me home. But the way he'd been acting, I was glad to be out of there. That was the last I heard about my comeback and it was the last I heard of You Came, You Saw, You Conquered. The record actually did come out in March of 1969, but it flopped so badly that Phil might as well have left it on the shelf with all my other unreleased songs. The strange thing is I wasn't even disappointed when it bombed. By now, my confidence was so low that I just accepted that record's failure as further proof that I wasn't a singer anymore. Looking back, I have to wonder if that wasn't what Phil wanted all along. Why could he write me a song called You Came, You Saw, You Conquered unless he was trying to send me a message? He came, he saw, and with that song, I was finally conquered. I was only 25 years old, but I'd already ignored so many things in myself that I wasn't even sure who I was anymore. I desperately needed to find an identity, and quick, or Phil and Manny Shevitz were going to drive me crazy. The identity I finally chose for myself was a natural. I would be a mother. I'd always loved kids, and I desperately wanted a family. I knew I'd make a great mom. All I needed was a kid and I found him, believe it or not, watching television. I was watching this documentary about unwanted babies on TV when the host held up this tiny baby boy. He was only a few days old with smooth brown skin and the waviest black hair. He was a half breed like me and he was beautiful. Oh my God, I said to myself, he's adorable. He even looked like what I'd imagined our child would look like. I took it as a sign from God. I was going to be a mother and I couldn't wait. One thing I will never understand is why people think that babies will solve the problem. I don't get it. You know, maybe because she wants to have something to do or focus on outside of her failing marriage. Okay, I get that. I get that. But you might want to fix yourself first. Because there's a reason why you're staying in this marriage. And it has a lot to do with insecurity. So for Ronnie to want to bring a baby in a home where the father is nuts. And she is struggling with an alcohol problem it it just shows me how children are raised fucked up even though dante was adopted phil wanted to raise him just like he was our natural baby 
I didn't see anything wrong with that. But like everything else in his life, Phil took that philosophy to a ridiculous extreme. In his fantasy world, Dante was our natural child. And Phil was going to do everything he could to convince the rest of the world that it was true. Including me. Phil was like, okay, we're going to say he was born this day. Out your coochie. And she like, wait a minute, Phil. Everybody going to know that I wasn't pregnant. It don't matter because we going to say the baby was premature. And then she say again, well, I might can go with this because ain't nobody seen me in months. I ain't been doing nothing but sitting in this house drinking and hiding from you. Phil Spector made an announcement and arranged it to look like this baby, Dante, came out her pastanka. The day we finally went to pick up Dante was probably the only true happy day of our entire marriage. But that goes to his craziness and her immaturity. When we walked out of the adoption agency with our brand new baby in his blanket, we were just like any other happily married couple. It was our dream come true. At last, we had a family of our own. We spent the rest of that afternoon feeding and fussing over Dante just like any other normal parents. I loved it. After we got Dante, my mom came to stay with us all the time. She loved staying in the little guest apartment we kept for her downstairs and loved having her around. I think I Phil liked having her around too because he could talk to her and he could also ask her to do little favors for him like the time he sent her to Watts to buy him an Afro wig. Why is her mother doing something like that? Well, maybe he's too embarrassed to ask, you know, the the people to do it that work for him. I mean, let me ask Ronnie's mama to do it. Okay. The Afro hairstyle was a big thing during the late 60s, so Phil decided he had to have an Afro wig. He thought it was the perfect hairstyle for a toupee because you couldn't see the net under all that hair. I also suspect... He liked the idea of wearing a black man's haircut. I swear sometimes Phil thought he was black. So he spent all kinds of money having these white wig makers design him Afro wigs. But they always looked ridiculous. That's when he finally got desperate enough to send my mother and me into Watts to find him an Afro wig that looks right. Phil was always very particular about his wigs. He would sit in front of his dressing room mirror for days trying to get his toupee to look real. We hardly ever went out, but on those rare nights when he did take me out to eat, he'd be up there for hours before we finally left. And if Phil couldn't get his wig on right, we didn't go out. His hair was a large part of our marriage. Damn, you bitches that wear wigs, y'all need to pay attention. Because some of y'all be walking out this house and you know your lace front be fucked up. You hear me? That shit be lily thin and crunchy and everything fucked up. But y'all still go out the house like nothing. We can see that shit. We can see that it lifting. You need to have the same respect and determination for wig perfection as Phil Spector. Phil loved his Afro wig. I guess it made him feel like he had soul or something because after he got it, he wanted us to go down to watch to hear some real gospel music at the Reverend James Cleveland Church. Leave James Cleveland out of this. Here I was, this black girl bored out of her mind at a gospel concert, sitting with a Jewish man in an afro who looked like he was about to speak in tongues. After the singing, Phil kept on shouting, Amen, Amen, all through Reverend Cleveland's sermon. When the Reverend held out the collection plate, child, Phil jumped up to his feet with a hundred dollar bill in his hand. Oh no! My mom gasped under her breath, but it was already too late to stop him. We bit our lips and watched Phil jog all the way up the aisle of the crowded black church, an Afro wig on his head and a hundred dollar bill in his hand. When I saw the handle of his 38 bobbing up and down in his, his jacket pocket, I actually started praying, please God. I whispered, don't let it fall out. 
What the hell? What kind of maniac is this that brings the blicker to the Jesus house? I know them people in the congregation was like, oh my goodness, we ain't gonna make it out. Who is this nigga? Now, I'd have been a little nervous. Me, myself, because I've been to a go-go before. And when you see strange behavior, you ease out the door. I was always that person, y'all. Because I'm telling y'all, people got killed in them go-go's. But that didn't stop me from going with my ignorant ass. People would always get murked after the go-go. So it was a tradition of me and my friends to always leave 30 to 40 minutes before the go-go ends. And I mean, them go-go bands will be cranking right towards the end. I'd be like, ooh, they cranking. We need to get out of here. Bop, 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 bop. Ooh, oh no, girl, but you got to go before they start shooting, girl. That has always been how I did things. I don't care if I'm just going to McDonald's. If McDonald's is closing at 3, bitch, I'm out of there by 2.15. If I was in the congregation and I'd have seen that blicker on that white man in the afro, Headed towards the front of the church, I would have had to leave that church. But I, I can't, I can't take that thing for you, Reverend Cleveland. They crazy if they stayed there. After the service, people were still staring at Phil as we worked our way through the crowd to the limousine that was waiting at the curb. My mother and I were embarrassed for him, but Phil actually looked proud as he smiled and wiped the sweat from his forehead. I guess I showed them. I'm not just any white guy. He bragged. That you did, Phil. My mother agreed. Yeah, you're that a white guy in an afro with a blicker. In, in a black church. Phil decided I had to see a psychiatrist about my drinking. I didn't like the idea at first. I thought it was Phil's way of telling me I was crazy. But I went anyway. If I was going nuts, at least I wanted to hear it from an expert. The psychiatrist was an older guy with an office way in the back of this medical building on Sunset. I was supposed to go in there once a week to talk about my drinking, but I ended up telling him about everything that was bothering me. Maybe you could get Phil to attend a group therapy session, he said. I agreed to check with Phil, but I had a pretty good idea what he'd say. And I was right. Phil went through the roof at the slightest hint that he might need psychiatric help. Group therapy? Come on, Veronica. What would I need group therapy for? He shouted. Do I look like the one with the problem here? If you got on that Afro wig and still carrying around a blicker, yeah. After that, Phil refused to pay for any more sessions with the quack, as he called them. But my problems didn't go away just because I stopped seeing my psychiatrist. If anything, they were getting worse. I'd had such high hopes after we got Dante. By the end of 1969, I knew that nothing was going to change. Being a father hadn't magically changed Phil into Prince Charming. I knew that. I knew that having a baby don't fix shit. And being a mom didn't change me overnight either. I wasn't any happier just because I suddenly had a baby to share my misery. Mm. At least I didn't have to worry about hiding my drinking from Phil anymore. Well, good.